This could be a rent. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got one that I bought in Tesco's. It's the Angelo Peretti Italian Hop Masters Premium Lager, smooth and aromatic. Not a fucking word of it is in Italian. Birra Italiana, I do lie. It's brewed by Carlsberg Marston's PLC. If ever there was a stamp of dog shit, that is it when you've got that on the bottle. Now, I don't want to judge a beer before I even fucking open the bottle, but you know what Marston's are like, you know what Carlsberg are like. They're bean counters, they basically want money. The beer is secondary, it's all about profit for them. Flavour, integrity when it comes to brewing, they are the epitome of macro brewing. Now, don't get me wrong, Macro brewing has its place. People like macro brewed beers. That's fine, I have no problem. I will not try and slag people off because of their taste in beer. But what I try to get over, the message I try to get over in all my reviews is that there is good beer out there. And I think if you're settling for stuff like this, then I think you're missing out. So I'm trying to get it over that you shouldn't really be missing out on drinking good beer. This style of beer or this type of macro brewed for profit type beer is not the only beer that's out there if you dig deep and if you can hunt down some good beer you will be surprised and then you will come back and revisit this and think why the hell am I drinking this shit because it is I, I, to be honest I don't really have to taste it I, I would love to be pleasantly surprised however Carlsberg and Marston's the two, it's a marriage made in hell, to be honest. I remember they took, uh, Carlsberg took over Marston's, I think uh, two years ago, I think it was. I did a video about it. And unless it was going to improve the taste of the beer that they were brewing, either was brewing, and it really hasn't, to be honest. I've tried quite a few Marston's beers on the channels. All the ones that they've taken over, for example, Hobgoblin, Witchwood Hobgoblin, the other brands that they've bought out and they're putting out now, such as Courage Directors and stuff like that. The the only one that did impress me, I will say, and this is a Marston's beer, the only one that did impress me was the Chocolate Stout, the Young's Chocolate Stout. And that wasn't bad at all. So I will hold my hands up and say that's one thing that Marston's got right. But... You really are looking for the diamonds in the dog shit with this lot. Their beer just hasn't got a good reputation. Now, they've done what they normally do, and Carlsberg have on, in this instance. They've bought out this company, Angelo Poretti, Birifico. Birificchio, I think that's how it's put it. I don't know, I can't fucking speak Italian. Um, they were a company, they were a genuine brewer. They were founded in 1877. They were based in Milan, or just on the outskirts of Milan, in a place called Varese, I think that's how it's pronounced, by a fella called Angelo Peretti. And he apparently went round Europe, Germany, Ch uh, Czechoslovakia, or Bohemia, as it was called then, searching out the best hops and the best ingredients for beer and he came back to Italy and started brewing and he named his beers after the amount of hops that were put in them so for example this beer has got supposedly four hops four different hop varieties in there knowing Marston's Carlsberg it probably hasn't it's got fucking hop extract hop oil Anything but loose leaf, fresh hops in there. I'm just looking at the ingredients. There's no brew sheet on here. It says, oh, origin. Origin of four hops. EU, non-EU. Well, that fucking tells me a lot, doesn't it? 
and that's just typical of Marston's. You don't get brew sheets. You don't, and I wouldn't believe the fucking put shit that they put on there anyway. I was researching this stuff, and I, I found out today actually, as an aside, and it would explain a lot. But Erdinger, Carlsberg and Carlsberg Marston's has got something to do with Erdinger, and that would make sense. And it wouldn't surprise me, judging by the lack of fucking flavour and lack of aroma, that they're brewing it somewhere. I know that. Erdinger is one of the biggest wheat beer brewers in, in Germany and in, in fact the world. But I never really got on with their beer. But I didn't they don't make a big thing about them owning that. I don't know whether they just distribute it or what, but you can get Erdinger everywhere in the UK. And I th it always baffled me because I thought to have that sort of reach, you need to have a good distributor. And if Carlsberg Marsons are distributing them, then well, yeah, you're gonna have that, aren't you? But pff, here we are anyway. I mean, I'm going way off on a tangent. Let's get this beer opened and let's get it investigated. Right, it's 660 mil. Now that was what made me think that this could potentially be brewed by Marsons because they do this with a lot of their continental beers. They put them in 660 mil bottles. The Star of Primen that's brewed over here. Do not fucking buy that, do not drink it. It is nothing like the Star of Primen that you get over in the uh, Czech Republic. It really isn't. But they do 66, 60 mil bottles of it there, which I don't know, it's just, just a strange measurement. But yeah, it's, it's 660 mil, it's 5%. It is a lager of Dis some description. Um, it's brewed and bottled by Carlsberg Italia in Induno, Induno Olana, VA. Where's VA? Verona, maybe? Italy. I don't know. I have no idea. Verona's not too far from Milan. It's up there in the north in the Lombardy region. Yeah, and it's just, there's just fuck all. Please drink responsibly. Drink aware. Fuck off. 3.3 UK units, what does that mean? I don't give a shit. Um, sell by date, 2023, 1st 2023. And that's it, I mean, it's it's just typical Marston's Fair, Marston's Carlsberg Fair. No no history of the brewery, no description of what it is. Um, yeah, I think we should just get this open and get it over with. <laughs> Right, luckily I have got a bottle, or a can I should say, of Budvar in the fridge. So if this is a massive pile of bollocky dog wank, which I think it might be, then I'll wash, it, I'll wash that down the sink and I will wash my gob out with some Budvar. There's the cap. I don't normally sniff the beer out of a bottle, but... Oh, that just smells nasty. It just smells macro brewed nasty. I don't even know whether I want to fill the whole lot out. Might just be a pointless exercise. Actually in the glass, and I will hold my hands up here, it don't smell that bad. It's not the usual fucking nastiness that you get from Carlsberg. Marston. Do you remember what was the other beer that I tried? Cobra. Do you remember I reviewed that? That stunk. In the glass, it smelled like a fucking bag lady's period. This actually doesn't smell nasty. It's, it's vague on aroma, but what I'm getting is some light lemon citrus, some grassy, grassy notes. But there's and I can, I'm sort of getting that as coming through now. I think there's some glucose syrup in that as well. It smells macro brewed. But without the nasties, that's all that's going to go in the glass. And there it is in the glass. Looks just like a lager. I don't know what it is. I don't know how Marston's do it. They just get beard, just not to smell of anything. I suppose Carlsberg. Again, that's what I'm saying. It's rare, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's rare that a beer has got no aroma and tastes absolutely outstanding. Normally, good beer comes with a really good aroma. This ain't got one. 
Oh well. Wish me luck. Bottoms up. There's that, there's that glucosey, syrupy sweetness. Oh my good God, what have they done? It's like, there's some kind of adjunct in there. I'm sure there is. It's like a corn, some sort of corn syrup maybe. Doesn't say it on there, they don't have to say it on there. I really wish, you know, the EU, if they really wanted to fucking do something decent, make brewers list every single ingredient that they put into their beers. Even the stuff that goes in before and doesn't end up in there. Oh, no aroma at all. What is the fucking point of that? There's just no character to it. No, no real flavour to it. It tastes vaguely like a, a macro brewed lager. Just watery. Typical Typical fucking macro brood nonsense. I keep sniffing it. I think I'm gonna get some more aromas out of it, but they're just not. It's just not happening on the aroma front. So let's just concentrate on the flavour. It's just lacking flavour. There's. There's vague lemon citrus. There's a slight sweetness to it, which I think is coming from some kind of syrup. Um, it's not unpleasant. Mind you, it is quite cold. I don't know what this would be like if it was a few degrees warmer, but it's just, it's just boring. Run of the mill. Run of the mill. Nothing in that that would make me want to buy this ever again. Smooth and aromatic. Aromatic, my fucking ass. There is. It just isn't an aroma coming from that. When they say aromatic, what beers are they comparing it to that makes it stand out as being aromatic? I don't fucking know. To be honest, and this is no disrespect to the Italians, I mean, you know, they've obviously got the wine thing going on and they love their food and all that, but your fucking beers, mate, honestly, have a word. Just leave it to the experts and just forget brewing fucking beer because it's just not good. I'm sure there must be small Italian craft brewers somewhere. Maybe, I don't know. But who brew a decent beer? But this lot, nah. You're, you're on a par with Peroni and that beer of Moretti and I don't know, all that other fucking nonsense. You know what, I was thinking the other night when I bought that, I tried, first time I ever tried Peroni in a can was at an airport in, it was in Italy. I think it might have been, I think it was in Milan, actually. An airport in, in Milan. And uh, it, there was like a, it was like a restaurant. And our old bass player, PK, who was a fucking maniac that kind of was. He was a funny bastard though. That's Percy, by the way. And uh, he walked in, and uh, he was hungry. And he walked straight up to the counter, and he was a Brummie. He's he, well, he is. He's from the Black Country. Got a real strong accent. You think Ozzy Osbourne's got a strong accent? His accent is ten times worse. And he just walked out. And he went, uh, "Oh, I'll have a meat feast if that's all right, please, mate." <laughs> Fucking meat feast. And the the fella behind the ramp just looked at him. What the fuck's a meat feast? He was after a pizza, and obviously he thought Domino's and um, Pizza Hut were the uh, the epitome of. Um, Italian pizza, so we asked for a meat feast. <laughs> Fuck you know. He was a good laugh, he was. Um this stuff, nah. I'm not I'm not digging it at all. I think this could be, well be a sink job.
there's just nothing. There's there's hints of glucose syrup. There's a very slight bitterness on the finish. There's a straw-like taste, straw paper to like taste. You know you get that from beer that's just been done on a production line. Um, nah, there's nothing to make me ever want to buy this ever again. And it doesn't. There's nothing that makes it stand out, in my opinion. So there you go. So what is the verdict on Angelo Poretti, Italian Hot Masters, Beerifico, Premium Lager, Smooth and Aromatic? Well, it's fucking boring. That's my verdict on it. It just doesn't. Four hops grown in Italy. Fourth hop grown in Italy. What does that mean then? Fourth hop grown in Italy. So the fourth hop in this is grown in Italy? That would explain the, the EU hops. Does Italy grow hops? I don't fucking know. Um, yeah, avoid it. There is nothing that makes this stand out. There's nothing that makes this, in my eyes, any better than Foster's, Carlin, Carlsberg even. It's just, I know they've changed the recipe on Carlsberg, haven't they? I should review that. It'd probably be another fucking rant. I'm trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep it down. I'm trying not to get, get too wound up, but when I say life is too short for drinking shitty beer at the end of these videos, I really do mean it because I bought this in Tesco's and I only bought it because I never tried it before. I didn't know it was a Marston's beer, Marston's stroke Carlsberg beer. But on the same shelf, you had Paulana, you had Pilsner Urkel, and you had Budvar as well. I mean, they're three good beers. And they had Varsteiner as well, which is a, is a pretty acceptable German beer, not my favourite, but it's okay. To fuck all that lot off and go for this, I really, I, I don't know, I, I just wouldn't understand that. I did it once just to try it. I mind you, I did buy some Paulana as well with it. But, I mean, if you've got this and you've got Paulana sitting on the same shelf, it's a fucking no-brainer. Go for the Paulana, that is a lovely drop. This stuff is just typical Marston's Carlsberg. Nothing to set it apart from the crowd. It's saying this is brewed in Italy. Is it? Well, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? It hasn't made any difference to the flavour whatsoever. Not interested. Probably going to pour it down the sink. Would I have bought it if I'd have known it was Marston's Carlsberg? Probably not, because, as I say, when you've got that stamp, on the beers, same goes with, well not all the time, but most of the time with AB InBev, certainly with Miller Coors and stuff like that, they just, they don't care about beer, they care about profit, and the beer is just, just a byproduct that people buy to generate them more profit, there's no real care gone into that. They don't give a fuck about flavour. They just, it's all about bean counting, how much, you know, they can get out of a, a single brew and how much money they can make of it, out of it. They don't care about flavour. I'm convinced of it. They wouldn't. And it boils my fucking piss when I see that head brewer. What's his name? Paddy McGinty? He must be, that's his name, Paddy McGinty. Fucking hell. And he must be on a fair old whack because if I was a, a head brewer and I was pumping out the shit that Marston's pump out I couldn't do it I couldn't if I had any conscience or if I had had a care about what I did about my role as, as a head brewer I wouldn't be fucking pumping that shit out I couldn't put my name to it I don't know but maybe maybe he's being paid a lot of money and he he doesn't give a fuck he's given up in the words of Gordon Ramsay when he goes into these restaurants and they just, they're just serving up any old shit and they're wondering why everything's fucking crashing down ar ar around them and they're not making any money and they're in debt and all that. It's because they've given up. I, I don't think Marston's ever really started, to be honest. But, again, I'm just sort of going into a fucking rant mode here and I shouldn't really because, again, it's, it's what you expect. At least they're consistent. Cons being consistently shit is at least consistent. So you know what you're going to get. It's not as if you, you're missing out and 
they'll occasionally do a fantastic beer. I mean, I did mention one earlier, the Young's Chocolate Stout. But if they do another beer and then, you know, the, the next two are shit and another beer. I mean, there's plenty of breweries like that, certainly English breweries. I could, Shepherd Name, prime example, they do some absolutely fantastic beers. They do some pretty ropey beers and they do some average beers. But it's always worth checking them out because their good beers really are good. And maybe it's a taste thing, but I don't know. But this fucking lot, bollocks, you're fucking rubbish. I'm going to give it a, a 3 out of 10 because it's vaguely drinkable. And that's I'm really, really generous here. If, if I was eating a curry, I, I know I was going on about the, um, the Cobra stuff. It's, it's exactly like that. If I was eating a curry, then yeah, maybe I would. Maybe I'll drink it. Because it, to be fair, it isn't the worst beer I've tasted from this lot. It's not great, don't get me wrong. But it would have to go with like a curry. You'd have to have some other focus for the flavour because you wouldn't be coming from the beer. This would just be a palate cleanser. It's what I call a palate cleanser. It does, it's like, it reminds me of the Tiskia beer. Is it Tiskia or the other one? No, it's Tiskia. It doesn't taste of anything, in my opinion. And it's, it's exactly like that. Doesn't do any, doesn't do any harm. Not offensive, but just no character. Boring, bland. A beer for just washing food down. That's all it is. So I'm gonna give it three out of 10. I'm gonna give it the same mark I give to the, to the Cobra beer. Am I going to recommend it? Would you get this in Sainsbury's? You can get it in Tesco's. Tesco's are doing Paulana, Hellas. And I'm not sure what Sainsbury's do. I don't, I don't tend to go into Sainsbury's. Out of all of them, I think they've got the worst beer selection. But you're bound to see this in certain places, maybe even in your little supermarket around the corner. It's Marston's, they get everywhere. They've got very good distribution. I've got Erdinger round the corner in the shop round here. I won't fucking touch it with a barge pole. I'm sure that's brewed over it, over here, because it's everywhere. I'm sure it all doesn't come from, from Bavaria. They're not brewing it in there. I don't know, I don't know, I don't care. That's getting a three out of 10. Not gonna recommend it. If you want a beer that doesn't taste of anything and you can't get hold of Cobra and you're eating a curry, have some, but otherwise do not fucking buy this for the flavor, because there ain't none. And remember, I'm drinking this shit so you don't have to.